Northwoods community invites married couples to break away from their busy schedules and spend quality time in rejuvenating The Willwoods community invites married couples to break away from their busy schedules and spend quality time in rejuvenating and enriching your relationship on a weekend married couples retreat. Held at the beautiful St. Joseph Abbey in Covington, you and your spouse will spend time growing closer in your marriage through inspiring talks, private couple time, personal alone time, reconciliation, Eucharistic adoration, and the celebration of the Mass. To register for your getaway, go to faithinmarriage.org. Welcome, everyone. This is the Climbing the Sycamore Tree Show. I'm Jason Angelette, joined by Jason DeMello, Father Jacob Dumont, and Chase Dwight. And today we're going to talk about Lent. We are one week away. Next week is, is Lent. So uh, if we want to be able to really enter into the season well, I think we got to have a game plan. And we're going to talk about that, some insights about the season that we've learned from in the past, and uh, something hopefully will bless you for you and your faith, for your marriage, for your family. For wherever you are. And before we start that, though, let's begin with prayer and Father Jacob. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we are about to embark on this journey, this call to follow you out into the desert, to experience this purification of our hearts. We ask that you help us to be open to how you want to work in our hearts, in our lives, and above all, to transform us more into your your loving heart and to your um, vision of how to build the kingdom. We often get caught up in so many worldly attachments and the going out into the desert is that experience of letting go of those securities. Help us to uh, take um, that courageous step in following you and that witness that you give to us in our own lives and we ask um, that we learn from your experience and even from some of the shared experiences today, how we can deepen in those convictions in our own lives. And we pray all this glory be to the to Father, Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. amen. And Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So a lot to talk about, little time to do it, but let's go right into it. Why, Father, do we need to enter into the desert, right? So there's this moment of, of ascetical practices that are normally associated with, uh, with Lent, and here we are at this time again, and what is this, um, why do we need to do this? So Lent, as we know, is the happiest time <laughs> of the year. <laughs> it's the most <laughs> wonderful time. <laughs> no, Lent, and when Lent comes around, we all kind of cringe because it's like, oh no, this is the tough time. But really, Lent should be an awesome time. Yeah. And why? Because we are able to enter into that desert experience. And the church is very wise in giving to us this time, this period of the liturgy, this period in preparation for the mysteries of celebrating Christ's passion, his death, but above all, his resurrection, by helping us to live that experience that Christ himself lived, going out into the desert, right? And uh, often the kind of three traditional points of Lent is, you know, you have prayer, you have fasting, you have almsgiving. Mm -hmm. So there are three means that the church offers to us to, in the end, die to ourselves, to let go of a lot of attachments or kind of false securities that we grab at and to surrender ourselves more to him. And we see that with the perfect example of Jesus Christ, who before he began his public ministry, went out into the desert after his baptism in the Jordan. And I've had the opportunity to even go to that place, wow. uh, the place of the Mount of Temptations in, um, the, in Israel, in the Holy Land. I've been there for a few pilgrimages. It's down near Jericho, which is kind of the very south part, close to the Dead Sea wow. of Israel. And when you go out to the desert, it truly is that. Mm. It's a desert, mm. right? You really have that experience of quiet, of solitude. Um, actually, up high on one of the mountains, there's a monastery that's built into like this, this mountain where 
they still, I think even till today, had um, some of the um, monks that live there, mm. right? In, and it's just that, it's just quiet and prayer. So they're very secluded from the world. And you know, you're there for maybe a couple of hours and you do already get that sense of, you know, well, of course there's a few other people coming and going, tourists, pilgrims, but that you're alone, mm. you know? And, and it's in the solitude and it's in the loneliness that what do we encounter? We encounter God, yeah. right? And that's what prayer is all about. But then also, you're, you don't have those hands-on tangible things that we like to grasp and have close to us that bring us comfort. Yes. Right? You have the heat of the desert. You have the emptiness of the desert. There's no comforts that are really there. Right? And so that teaches us that lesson of letting go so as to place our trust in the Lord. Right? And finally, of course, almsgiving is, is always a way of offering of ourselves for others. It's true love for others. And, um, you know, that desert experience also helps us to recognize, well, the gifts that we have that we can offer to others, that we can place at the good of others. So, um, you know, it, we always kind of tend to see that desert experience in a negative way, to see Lent even in that negative yeah. way of, oh, I have to give something up, chocolate or things that I like. Right. But it's actually in letting go, right, that we all know, you know, by faith that we truly receive. It's by giving that we uh, achieve so much from God. It's such a healthy time and an opportunity, like you're saying, not something to be afraid of or to try to push away or to just kind of try to rush through and distract yourself from, but to really enter into it's maybe a modern way of saying it would be kind of like a detox program, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you kind of go in and there's there's d attachments, there's things unhealthy, maybe vices, maybe that we've kind of maybe good stuff, but just maybe we've taken it to an extreme. Like you're saying, we're finding a lot of comfort in those things mm -hmm. where the Lord is really asking us to draw us near to be close to Him and find our real comfort and foundation in Him. Yeah, I think it's funny what you said. It's, it's put it in modern terms like a detox thing. I think it's funny how a lot of these things that <laughs> Catholics have been practicing across the millennia are things that are, you're seeing pop up in popular culture, yeah. in strictly secular culture with uh, you know, intermittent fasting is a pretty common thing that right. people are doing right now, and then these detox programs, mm -hmm. and then you see people go on these social media fasts where, right. oh, guys, I need to put it down for 30 days or whatever. It's like, I think those are all things that we've been mm -hmm. preached to with the church for, uh, you know, across the millennium. And so, so Lent is really this invitation, I feel like. It's an invitation to draw near to our Lord and to allow some of those distractions that we can easily get caught up into and to kind of put those aside and to really find some some intimate time with our Lord. And and like Father, you were saying, like it's not just about like, you know, we, we want to be able to enter into a time where like, okay, well I'm gonna I'm gonna fast from uh, chocolate. I love chocolate, right? And so I'm gonna stop eating chocolate for during Lent or some people really embrace like a real hardcore intense like fasting of something that they really like for the entire Lent. You're like, wow, you're gonna give up that the whole time. It's like wow. But that is true, like that's something that's important, that's part of our, our practice. But we'd also, we also then would ask the question, well, what are you doing to kind of enter into that relationship with the Lord? And I would also ask someone who's trying to enter more into a relationship with the Lord, like what are you doing to also embrace like a kind of a, a suffering in the body almost? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah I think, I think uh, you bring up a good point. I think, I think everybody is like in their own spiritual place right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that like if your spiritual place is I pray 15 minutes a day mm -hmm. or your spiritual place is I pray three times a week right. you know maybe you should pray every day and it's something that you should work on doing although you know you we, we all should be praying all the time sure is the goal but if we're spending 15 minutes maybe we spend 30 minutes mm -hmm. or maybe we're perfect and we're praying <laughs> an hour and a half a day and well maybe we do a a spiritual book or something yeah. extra that we might add to that as the the spiritual part and then I, I really think about the uh, you know for us that are doing Exodus I always kind of think uh, when it's Lent time it's like yes more people got to suffer <laughs> with me <laughs> you know, so we're I don't, not alone yeah I don't feel as bad you know like suffering because everybody else is suffering but then you know it's like okay well what else am I going to do like can, yeah. I, can I do something else because I mean you're giving up a lot and we've kind of joked about this in our little group it's like what else can I give up you know it's like what can I really do but like looking to my kids, I was telling Jason, looking to my kids last year, was, they really impressed me because one of, my, one of my sons said that he was gonna give up sleeping in his bed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is awesome, like great idea. So then another one joined him, you know? 
because he wanted to be like his big brother. And the other one was like, well, I don't want to do what they're doing, you know? <laughs> so he decided that he was going to sleep without a pillow. Wow. And I was thinking to myself, like, this is really cool stuff, like, that wow. they're adding in there. So, I mean, looking to these kids and kind of encouraging them to pick something that they want to give up to, you know, not, you know, because a lot of times the kids are like, well, Dad, I'm just going to not eat cereal. And that's yeah. what I'm, or, or you know what, I, I really don't like green beans, so I'm going <laughs> to give up green beans. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so Jason, I think we found your, uh, you know, what else you're going to give be, give up besides Exodus is sleeping, sleeping on, on the floor. floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome, though. You know, one of the things that, that, uh, about, like, bringing Lent into our homes, into our families and stuff like that is that sometimes we feel like, you know, well, I don't want to burden the kids or I don't want to, like, it's like, it's, it, you know, they're, 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 I don't want to push them away or whatever like that. Like, really, like, Jason, you and Fran have done an amazing job of witnessing the faith and it's just it just it's natural supernatural that they would want to respond as they see you witnessing your faith in the world they want to embrace that challenge too so really really want to challenge uh, families to really get together and talk about that and invite them like what do you invite your ask your children what do you think you can give up for Lent this year or what and, and have these conversations now so that when when Lent comes which is again a week from today right we're going to be talking about these more uh, these these themes and these, these concepts but the point is that right now have that conversation with your kids and allow them to kind of have that creative potential to kind of maybe say a little something that might surprise you um, so but I do think it's important especially when you're talking to the kids that you help them to have the right intention yeah. the right intentionality that they're not doing it just for the sake of doing it or fulfilling some sort of law or norm. Boasting about it. Yeah, or mm. boasting about it. We saw just, you know, the past couple of days, actually, the readings from the liturgy have been precisely that, where Christ is warning yeah. the scribes and the Pharisees, don't just do it because this is a tradition yeah. or this is the law or this is some uh, requirement. It's a, r a ritual. It's a ritualism that they fall into, but their hearts are distant from God. And I think that is the message that uh, is so crucial in sense of giving witness as a parent or you know as um, you know a family member or friend it's that we want to help others to have that deep change of heart yeah and that's what Lent is about it's not just fulfilling some you know saying at the end you know yeah. I did it I accomplished right, right, it right. Um, you know one year I didn't think I could even do it and I gave up coffee and uh, mm. I love coffee and I need <laughs> coffee and I gave it up right and afterwards the rest of the priests in my community were like, you're never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> you had to suffer your wrath. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's not about just saying, you know, I was able to do it. It's about true charity, you know. So this year, I'm going to definitely drink my coffee. <laughs> right. Well, and also, too, I think it's a discernment process, right? Like, to actually pray and put in the prayer, like, Lord, what, what is it that you want me to, to give up to? Uh, what am what sacrifice do you want me to embrace, and what um, like devotion can I also in embrace in this? Because it's not just about giving up something, but it's also, you know, like I'm going to go without this. But it's also drawing closer with the Lord, and so um, like maybe to put that into prayer if you're married to have you and your spouse remember the two of y'all are put on this earth together to get each other to heaven and the kids like spend time with your spouse and talk about this great gift that you have in, in this opportunity in Lent with the kids as well and then also to uh, Band of Brothers we've been talking about this the men's group and having these conversations find some friends that kind of join in together and maybe do something if y'all not do, if you don't have a, if a group of guys that you're with and hanging out with and you haven't done something like this before now is a good time to maybe start something mm -hmm. My best Lent, you talk about the difference between giving something up and actually doing something. The best Lent that I've ever had was in 2009, 2010, something like that. I was actually in physical therapy school right over Jason's shoulder at, in, in that building right over there. Um, and at that point in my life, I was 100% dedicated to school, and that's what I did. I, you know, I was in the books all the time. And the idea, even spiritually from a growth perspective, I wasn't at a place where daily mass was a thing that was on my radar, but I had found out that St. Joseph's Church right over there yeah. has a daily mass that works out to be at, at, at noon. Mm -hmm. And we always had a break in our day between 12 and 1. So I said, well, all right, well, if mass is at noon, then when I get out of class, I can run down and go to mass. And, and I did that. And I, I can't say that I did it every day for 40 days, but it was definitely a powerful experience for me to put down the books, to stop studying, to, you know what, I'll get something, I'll grab something to eat before I get back into the classroom, right. but for right now, for these next 40 days, for right now, I'm going to, to Mass, and it was so powerful. There were so many fruits that came out of that that 
you know, you, you don't even think about until years and years later you reflect back on how, how special that time was. So, yeah, we talk about being in the desert and how we're not looking forward to it, but the fruits can come from that. 100%. Um, yeah. And that, actually, I'm glad you said that because that one of the things we can recommend, I think, highly would be, especially in the Archdiocese of New Orleans, Archbishop Amen called for a year of the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. So during this Lent, um, to embrace uh, our Eucharistic Lord, uh, going to Mass, going to adoration, uh, learning more about it. There's actually something that I, I saw just today, and this is uh, from Dr. Scott Hahn. Will, if you can pull this up for me. This on his website, this is the uh, stpaulcenter.com. This is a, a, a Lenten series that's going to come out this, so starting next week, and this is free. It's a free streaming um, opportunity for you to enjoy and walking through obviously the Bible and the Mass and to be able to, uh, to take advantage of these 10 episodes that you can uh, stream for free on your device. And uh, again, Scott Hahn, uh, he had a, a, just a, a strong uh, emphasis, uh, emphasis this, this Lent to dive deeper into the Scriptures but also to an understanding of the Mass and the Eucharist. Another thing, since we're also celebrating uh, this year, our Holy Father called for a year of St. Joseph, um, I just found this on one of the, the, the sell, uh, booksellers. Um, this is by uh, Father Mark Goring. He's got a great podcast that you can go on his website or on the YouTube channel. And it's always like in the morning. It's like a five-minute little reflection. But he wrote a book uh, called the, uh, St. Joseph the Protector. And it's a nine-day preparation for entrustment to St. Joseph. Sometimes we can get kind of big on some of our um, ideas of what we want to do, books we want to read. This is a nine-day uh, preparation that you can uh, easily do, right? You can fit this into the, nine, the 45 days of Lent. This could be nine of those days. And the other thing I want to highlight, which is something I'm sure everybody else is already pretty much uh, aware of, but um, if you go to ascensionpress.com, Father Mike Schmidt uh, with uh, featuring uh, Jeff Cavins, uh, they're doing a Bible in the Year. So this is a podcast that you can take advantage of uh, on your uh, mobile device, um, the, and 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 really do follow along with so what so many people are doing right now. I hear it's the number one podcast in the country right now. Is this is this particular podcast? So a lot of great resources um, that you can take advantage of, and uh, something that we really want to encourage as far as what is it that we can do to kind of draw a little closer to our Lord and our understanding of the faith, especially our, our devotion to the Eucharist. What can we read? What can we study? What can we learn? But but also being present, like Chase said, like finding that time maybe during Lent, maybe that one extra day or maybe another extra day, if you're depending upon if you, you're, what you're already doing, and embrace the Lord more in the presence of our Lord in adoration or in the Mass. And then learning more, a little bit more about St. Joseph, about the work and yeah. the influence that he has uh, in the Holy Family and that call that we are meant to be men of St. Joseph as well. Yeah, Father Donald uh, Calloway also has that consecration to St. Joseph. I think I read it, you know, myself and uh, did the consecration. It was an awesome mm -hmm. kind of lesson in some of the virtues of St. Joseph. And many of us probably don't know too much about his life. We don't know too much about uh, his influence because, you know, in the Gospels, he never says anything. Right? But when you really delve into his life and get to really reflect and meditate just on, you know, especially those virtues that he lived so strongly in his life, his faith in God and, you know, being able to pick things up and just go, yeah. right, which is such a, w a great witness of trusting in the Lord and trusting in his divine providence, uh, his humility, which we can all uh, grow in. I know yeah. myself, I still have to work a little bit in that area. <laughs> I'm almost there, I'm so close. I'm almost there. <laughs> but so many virtues that we learn from him. Yeah. Yeah. Those resources are incredible. All the stuff that's available for us. That yeah. uh, the, the pie, I'm a podcast guy. I love that. So I've been doing the Father Mike Schmidt. He's actually my workout partner. Um, <laughs> I put him in my ears, and then I, I, I in the that. gym, I listen to that. That I mean, it's like 20, 20 minute minutes. tops, uh -huh. and you get. Uh, if we go through the whole 365 days, we'll get the whole Bible in a year, and um, you get a great little reflection along with the readings for the day. And I like being able to tie that stuff into daily life. So I was talking to a friend resource. of mine um, just this uh, on Friday last week, and, and she was telling me that, like she she wasn't like she doesn't feel like she's very knowledgeable about the faith and and, and stuff like that. And so she just recently started doing the the um, Father Mike Schmidt's uh, Bible podcast, 
and she started having like these conversations in faith and quoting some of the scriptures in the Old Testament. And she was just kind of like, whoa, like that was me, like I did that. Like that wasn't something that she would have normally have done. But it's amazing, like the faith is beautiful. And, and we live in a time, as crazy as things are, with everything going on and, and even in the stuff that can go on in the internet and stuff like that, we have access to an amazing library online of, of great resources, of great podcasts, of books, scripture readings, reflections, um, all kinds of stuff that we can take advantage of, apps and, and, and devotions and all these things that we can get right at our fingertips. This Catechism of the Catholic Church, it's there. And I would say one of the maybe sacrifices that you could make is, yeah, maybe saying no to a little bit of the television time or <coughs> some of those hours that we can waste on social media, scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, we can waste a lot of time. And instead of uh, spending the time on that, to say no to that and say yes to something that is gonna be more constructive and learning more about my faith. And that's the beautiful thing is there are so many resources now. Um, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why so many people are now listening in We've never had, it's, it's some, such a simple idea, but yeah. you know, just listen to a podcast of the Bible being read, right? Yeah. And to do it 20 minutes a day, it's a great way just to break it down, make it simple. But now we have so many of these resources at our hands. I think you bring up a, a really good point about um, you know, taking the time to think about what you're gonna give up during yeah. Lent, and then using that time that you gave up this thing, whatever it yeah. might be, to do something else. So, and you get, you said, TV, for instance, and I think as a family, you know, sometimes it's always like, guess what, we're giving up TV, and everyone's <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> dad, please do. I know my dad did that when we were little, we are like, that's what you're giving up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if we think about, as parents, if we give up something like, for me, maybe it's social media, or it's my phone in the evenings, or something like that, that's going to give me time to spend with my family, mm -hmm. right? But it's also going to free up time, you know, if I'm not, I mean, we could sit through, we were talking about this earlier, you could skip, you know, skip through hour, social media yeah. for an mm. hour, you know, that's a whole hour of prayer mm. that, that we might have. So, and then I think adding in, or we're talking about the sacraments, like adding in an, another sacrament for that hour, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's, a, it's sitting in front of the Eucharist or it's going to Mass for that hour. Um, that you can add that time in, you know, and then really like we got a little bit of time, we got a week. Go sit in front of the Eucharist yeah. and talk to God about what He wants to free up in our lives, you know? Mm. And I think that that'll help us give something up that, that God wants us to give up. Like, hey, this is where I see you freeing yourself to, to focus on something else and spring yourself into the year. You yeah. know? That idea of freedom coming from yeah. adhering to some strict rule is something that's a big part of the Exodus 90 program. And that's something I've learned from that is that when you're following these guidelines or these ascetic practices and giving something up like that, it is freeing because you're realizing yeah. what's got you bound. Are you bound to that television time every yeah. night? Are you bound to that social media thing? Are you bound to whatever it is that's occupying your time? And then once you give it up, you know, you find out that you have the freedom to do things that are more productive. It's crazy yeah. how like so many things, praise God indeed, right? It's, it's, it's crazy how so many things can like creep in and then you can get like this addiction, this attachment to checking your emails or checking the, the sports stuff or and maybe it's even like a little game on your, your phone that you kind of get it, you can get caught. <laughs> that, that, uh, you know, like, uh, right, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we're like you, you've had these things where like, it's, it's like all of a sudden your focus is in it and you're giving yourself not away to another, you're not fostering that relationship with others, either with whether it's prayer time or just being with your family and then being able to then say, okay, maybe this time in Lynn is that, is that maybe giving you permission, right? This, this Lent to, to really dive into that particular desire to spend more time with God, but also with your children, with your spouse, with friends, even with family members, to really challenge you to do that instead of maybe investing in like maybe some of the social media stuff or some of the technology, the movies and things like that, to really kind of press in, to really take advantage of this gift that we've been given in this time. I mean, we, we always say, or we, we hear from people who have lost loved ones and 
you know, you don't get this time back. And you, you want to be able to, to really be thankful in one way of being thankful for the things, the people that have been blessing you and being in part of your life is being able to make sure that you're spending time with them. And that's a, I think that's a really important thing. The other thing too, that you were saying like, you know, giving up television, you know, the, there is something about like with the family, like, you know, say, okay guys, we're going to cut back on some of our television watch, but maybe instead of just saying, instead of cutting back on like movies and shows and things like that, maybe add something good and holy, like The Chosen, yeah. mm. um, that's a, a great series. In fact, uh, Jude, uh, my son, he's been doing Exodus 90 and he wasn't feeling well and he had like the sinus infection so we kept him home a couple days. And uh, uh, anyway, he was like saying, Dad, I can't watch television. I was like, well, that's okay. He's like, well, what about if, could I watch The Chosen? And I was like, yeah, you can watch The Chosen. <laughs> so he went on YouTube and started watching The Chosen again because we've already watched it as a family. But instead of watching these other kind of sometimes mindless, just and th sometimes there's a place for some like, you know, silly shows and stuff like that. But to really kind of in invest this time in some of these really great quality shows that are out there about the faith and virtue and, and all that. Well, and even getting like your family together, you mentioned like, you don't want to force your family to do anything. So if you get them all together, you have the powwow, and you're like, all right, what do you all think we should give up as a family, right? And let them mm. kind of decide. Let's put the ideas down, you know, and then, you know, the parents can kind of pick the best one, you know. And then what are you going to give up? Your, I know we have this little board in our house, and, like, the kids put it up there, and a few of the younger ones, like, end up erasing it and putting something <laughs> different. Like, you know, Dad, the, the chocolate really was a bad idea. <laughs> was I wasn't even, weekend, right? Yeah, I wasn't really thinking about <laughs> that one. But, you know, like, the kids, but it, it lets them choose what they want and then, you know, sacrifice it for something, you know? Like, think about something that day, like, hey, I, son, I know you really want this cereal right now, and she gave up cereal, so... Let's, let's think about, you know, your grandmother right now, and maybe you can give that up for your grandmother, right? Mm. You know, so uh, things like that help them, like they want to do it, yeah. you know, instead of us forcing them to do it and making it this, this horrible thing. Mm -hmm. I like too what, what uh, Eric Cedar, who usually is with us, he talks about how like um, th the time when there's n less television, they've been playing a lot of games together as a family. So I remember the pop checks, uh, Gr uh, Greg and Lisa uh, pop check, they talked about in the home, the liturgy of the home is uh, play, pray, work, and rest. And, uh, and sometimes we can be heavy in the prayer, but not have time to really invest in that, that rest or that play that we need to have as a family and um, to really kind of invest in that. So again, maybe during our prayer time, we can see what are some ways that we can really challenge each other and challenge the family, but to really grow not just in prayer, but also in rest and make sure we take that Sunday rest and also in play and like really spending time with the kids and, and fostering that opportunity to really um, develop that, that relationship with them in those moments. Anything else, guys? We've got about a minute and a half left. Time? No, I'm looking forward to Lent this year. I'm going to think about what I'm going to give up. Yeah, spend some time in front of the Eucharist and maybe come up with something good. Something more than and I, and Exodus. We'll have to <laughs> discuss this at our Exodus <laughs> meeting. And I, and I feel like, and I don't know about y'all, but like the more that I feel like I like allow God to to inv like to in the more that I invest in Lent, right? The more that I open up more to what Lent is asking of me. Like I feel like Easter is like a, a, a better celebration, regardless of how many Reese peanut butter eggs that I have in my stock or in my, my basket. You know, that what I'm saying? stomach ache is going to be. I know exactly, <laughs> but it's like there's something about that, like to, that when we in, in, in embrace the challenges of Lent, that there's something also too waiting for us in the, the celebration of, of of Easter that we can really partake in in a new way. So I don't think that's, and I think that's very fitting because there's on, the only way to the joys of Easter will be through the sufferings and challenges of Good Friday. And so, Father, could you uh, lead us out with a prayer? Sure. Lord, we've reflected on your journey that you went on through the desert. You invite us to that same experience now that we come upon Lent. Help us to be open to your voice in our hearts and in our lives to respond generously to that call, to learn what more you are asking us to let go of so as to say yes to you, to be more generous in loving you and responding to that call, uh, to love you above all things, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us to see a little more clearly maybe those little attachments we're still kind of latching on to and help us to let go so that we truly have that spiritual freedom, that ability to choose you and truly to find happiness and joy. We ask Our Lady that she accompany us in this journey that we're about to embark on. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. And Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Well, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, please leave comments. We can come back and follow up on any uh, questions or comments that you may have afterwards. Um, but we really appreciate your time with us. And uh, please take a look at this nice commercial on retreats. Want to get away and strengthen your faith and enrich your marriage? The Willwoods Community invites you and your spouse to a weekend married couples retreat at the serene St. Joseph Abbey in Covington. You know, attending a couples retreat does not mean that something is wrong with your marriage or that someone is failing. In fact, it's just the opposite. It means that couples are doing something good to strengthen their love for one another. It's not a failing, but rather a falling into the arms of our God who loves us and wants to bless us and refresh our souls. Just as Jesus himself retreated to a special place to be with the Father, we too have an opportunity on a retreat to break away from the busyness of daily life and spend quality time with God and each other. It gives you the chance to step away from your day-to-day -day life, to spend the time together, receive the sacraments, and reflect uh, on your marriage and work on improving it. To learn more about the Willwoods Community Married Couples Retreat Program or to register for a weekend, go online to faithandmarriage.org.